Baba ya siandiria, ranta bro wa sukata ya siandiria, rente bre de 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 masiandiria zekata ya, rande de 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 masukata ta ya siandiria, reka baba 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 ba ya suandiria, rente bre de 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 masukata ya siandiria, ranta bro wa siandiria. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Amen. We are praying. I mentioned spiritual purity yesterday. We are praying that Lord help me to be pure in the spirit, so that I'll be able to have a proper fellowship with the Holy Spirit for the Spirit of God to move in my life. Amen. For the Spirit of God to move in our life, we have to have a pure heart. He mentioned also pure, having a pure heart. Having a pure thought, our thought should be pure. There are things that run in there that are not of God. That causes the Holy Spirit to move away from us. Amen. We are praying that we will receive that spiritual purity. Amen. That spiritual purity devoid of any sins, devoid of our own ways. Amen. At times we want to use our own ways to do things which are not the ways of God. Amen. We are saying that, Lord, help me to be spiritual. In the name of Jesus, may I mature, spiritual maturity, spiritual purity. In the name of Jesus, may I have that, spirit, that, that conscience, our, our thoughts should be pure. Amen. We should think good. We should think positive. Amen. At times, we will be, we will be, we will be looking at things like the examples he gave us. You look at them in, in, in your mind. It is different, but what you are saying too is different. Amen. We are saying that, Lord, grant me that grace so that I will be in the same alignment with you. Amen. I will be pure. I will be organic. There will not be any artificial. In the name of Jesus, somebody let's come before him. In the name of Jesus, that he will grant us the grace to be pure in heart. The grace to be pure in our thoughts. The grace to be pure. In the name of Jesus, spiritually. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. There, is, there will not be any soulless wishes in there. Anything that will come in that is not of God. We pray, O oh Lord, that Father, you will help us set ourselves apart for you. For your use, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, may we put ourselves, O oh Lord, set ourselves apart for your use. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, mercy us, O Lord, and grant us that spiritual purity that will help us, Holy Spirit, to live a holy life, an acceptable life. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the grace, O Lord, to live a pure life, the grace, O Lord, to live a spiritual purity life. May our our spiritual life be pure in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray that Father may this be our portion, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, help us, Holy Spirit, help us, King of Kings. Help us, Lord of God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We are praying again for moral purity. These days, it's like the moral decadence is more on the high. We are saying that, Lord, grant me the grace to be morally pure. And here he said that it includes the, the most, not uh, only sexual imma, uh, 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 immorality, but all. Most of the time when you talk about morality, it's all about sexual immorality and the stuff. Yes, it is part. But we are saying that, Lord, help us to be honest, to have that integrity. Amen. To have that righteousness. Amen. We need that moral purity in our institutions, in our offices. Yes, you will go there and then you will see that, yes, he is the, the, the deacon or he is, the, he is the, church, the church elder. But he is the one that will even obey me or say, if you don't pay, he will not mind you. We need that moral, moral purity. That integrity should be there. Amen. Those of us in the church, 
we should have that moral purity. There is this confrontation. We are going to pray. There is this confrontation between my one of my boss and then another person there. And it's as like Chuma mentioned something. So she was telling me, not knowing that they are all from the same church. What about when you go to church and then you are praying and they say that you should hold your hands and pray. Pray for her. <laughs> How about some now? What, which, which, what kind of prayer are you going to? He said, oh, so for your bobon pie, you be buy a pui and you pui. You are what a bobon pie, you be. So it's like the, 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 there is, we are just doing it because we have to come to church and come and do something and go. Amen. We are praying that the Lord will grant unto us that moral decadence. That moral decadence, we, 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 we have to abhor it. We are praying that, Lord, take it out. May it start from me. If you are able to do the right thing, those around you will also start. That honesty, we should, be, we should have that integrity. We are praying that the Lord will grant unto us that grace to have that moral integrity in every arena of our life. Not when we only come to church, but when we come to all every part of our life. In the name of Jesus, somebody let's pray for that grace that the Lord will help us touch our morality in the name of Jesus. Anything that will help us, oh Lord. To, act, uh, to help our morals. We pray that, Father, may you grant unto us that grace in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us, King of kings, so that we will have a moral uprightness, moral righteousness, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Unto thee. Oh Lord, who is like unto thee? Oh Lord, who is like unto thee? Oh. Fearful in praise to 
streaming bless you for joining in keen in knitting our faith to our faith so that we can all rise before the presence of the lord talk to god right now tell the lord this is my hour this is my moment i have come because of you you are my change agent through the power of the holy ghost i avail myself pour out your totality into me i empty myself of myself so that your total visitation shall be my portion. I am here to allow myself to evolve, to become like you. 
that I will imitate you in conduct, in attitude, in everything, so that, Lord, I will resemble and represent you properly on this planet Earth. My hand is up as a sign of surrender. I don't have my own. I am not my own, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. I look up to you, ancient of days. Let Duskabaya talk to God right now. Many a time we get into services and, and we forget why we are there. We get into services and we lose sight of the essence of the service. By the time we realize we are serving on religion, but we need a relationship right now. The Holy Ghost is a person. We need the right attitude. We need the right in our mindset, we need the right posture in his presence in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, nothing should quench the spirit, nothing should grip the Holy Spirit. Lift your voice, come before the Lord. This is very important. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Come on now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for his goodness. Father, God bless us tonight. Show us your mercies. Reveal your goodness unto us. Turn us, turn us, and we will be turned. By your power, let your spirit, our resident God on earth, transform us. Let there be a supernatural shift in our lives. Be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Please. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. In this season and as part and given unto us by God, as KHM Global, uh, we undertake holy convocations the last week of every month, hallelujah, to prep us for the coming month. Why? Because we don't know tomorrow. No matter how good we are astute in prophesying, we prophesy in part. We know in part. And therefore, we have come to humble ourselves like Ezra and to seek help, seek protection, seek guidance, seek direction from our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. I said to us the other day that Ezra, not only Ezra, Ezra humbled himself, when you get into uh, Zechariah as well, you realize that in the days of Zechariah, the Bible says that he said, not by might, not by power, but by uh, spirit. And when he said that, the next thing that he said was that, who are that O mountain that stands before me, you shall become like a plane. In other words, the Holy Ghost, you know, can override any form of challenge that we face. Hallelujah. Or no amount of mountain or challenge is a match. To the Holy Ghost and his power, his efficacy. This morning we are looking at from the broader umbrella and the spirit of God moved. We are looking at the promise of the Father. Everybody say the promise of the Father. Say the promise of the Father. Amen. So we will take some few scriptures and then we will do the needful. Hallelujah. Let's get into Genesis. Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number Two from the AMPC Genesis 1 2, and then we will look at Acts chapter number 1, verse number 4, and the verse number 8. And we will set sail. The Bible says, In the beginning, from verse 1, okay, that the Lord made the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form, the earth was without form and void. There's two verse, the earth was without form. And an empty waste. The earth was without form and empty waste. Without form and empty waste. And darkness was upon the face of the very great deep. Darkness was upon the face of the very great deep. Hallelujah. Amen. The spirit of God was moving. And into bracket as we see hovering, brooding over the face of the waters. Hovering, brooding over the face of the 
waters. Acts chapter number 1 and verse number 4. And while being in their company and eating with them, while being in their company and eating with them, this was after the resurrection, he commanded them. It was not a suggestion. It was a command. He commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, not to leave their locality, but to wait for the Father, for the Father had promised, for, to, uh, to wait for what the Father had promised. Somebody say the Father has, prom has, has, has promised. All right. So of which he said, you have heard me speak. Of which he said, you have heard me speak. And so we, we, if we get even into the book of Luke, Luke chapter number 24 and verse number 49. Luke chapter 24, Luke 24 and 49. And he said unto them and said, and behold, I will send forth upon you what my father has promised. I will send forth upon you what my father has promised. But remain in the city, Jerusalem, until you are clothed with power from on high. So verse number 8 of Acts chapter 1 now explains this. In this statement says that and ye shall receive power but ye shall receive power, ability, efficiency and might, ability, efficiency and might. I'm not saying empty power but ability, efficiency and might. When when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my exhibit, my witness. You shall be my models. You shall be my witness in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria and to the ends the, the very bounds of the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Promises are very, very important. Very, very important. So when people promise, it is said to that you must adhere to the promise or you must meet the promise. And so when you're dealing with kids, usually they will tell you, Daddy, you said you buy me chocolate and you didn't bring it. A promise is a promise. And when it comes to promise, children are able to lift up one of their fingers like this towards the face of the parent and tell you Papa, promise is a promise. Hallelujah. It looks like an oath. But when we come into 2 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse number 20 the Bible expressly states is that 2 Corinthians 1 20, 20 For as many as are the promises of God, they are all find they, they all find their yes answer in Him, in Christ. And for this reason, we also utter Amen. So be it to God through Him in His person and by His agents, agency to the glory of God. The King James simply put, they are yea and they are what? They are yea and they are. So when God has promised, he has promised. And what was this promise as the Greeks would put it as epigalia, an assurance. Hallelujah. An assurance, somebody making a pledge to somebody that I'm going to redeem this pledge. I'm going to fulfill this that I am telling you. I will do something for you. And so we realize that this promise is seen in John chapter 14 verse 20 says, John chapter number uh, 15 verse 20 says, and then John chapter 16 verse 7 
and the 13th verse. And that we realize that Jesus Christ emphatically tells the disciples that it is better for me to go so that the, uh, I will send you the comforter which the Father will send. Hallelujah. Amen. The spirit of truth. He kept on admonishing them saying that it is for your own good. I will send you another comforter. In other words, I came to time for the 33 and a half years. I was comforting you. But there is another comforter that is going to come. Hallelujah. Within the brackets of the triangle. God. And he is the Holy Ghost. And he will lead you into all truth. He will be your guide. He will bring into remembrance everything that you have forgotten. The Bible categorically also says that he will convince you. He will convict you of sin. Amen. You could push further into John 16 and then verse number 7. And then the verse number 13, hallelujah. He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And inferently, Christ himself was dependent on earth, on the Holy Ghost. During his baptism, the Bible said that the Holy Ghost came upon him. So if I am using the phone for my call, how do I give you the same phone? But when I am done with the call, I can give you the phone. Jesus was still fulfilling his call in time. So he says that wait for it. Let me finish my call. So that you can make your call sure. In time. Is somebody here? Hallelujah. And so he promised them. There he, he, he promised them and so on. Even when he came, he resurrected. He entered into the door without opening the door. He entered into the wall. He was, they were there and he beat upon them and said, receive the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost actually had not descended to bed for the New Testament church. Why? Because inferiorly, he was still whilst on earth needing the Holy Ghost and I'm sure he will go ascending into heaven by the flight called the Holy Ghost. Says when I go he will come. Hallelujah. And so you know after his 40 days spending time after resurrection the Bible says on the 50th the, the Pentecost they were all gathered in the upper room Acts chapter 2. And he descended like a mighty rushing rain. And he filled the whole atmosphere and sat on them. Hallelujah. Like clothed, uh, of, uh, uh, you know, a clothed tongue of fire over their heads. Hallelujah. Sat upon them to direct them. And the New Testament church was born. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ had lived with the disciples and knew that the Holy Ghost is the agent, one of the agents of creation in the triune God or in the Godhead. And so we read from Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number 2. The Bible says, when the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, the Holy Ghost moved over the waters. If the Holy Ghost had played this initial role, then we should know that he knows the end from the beginning. He knows the nooks and crannies of your call. He knows the inside out of your assignment. Hallelujah. And knows that nobody can fulfill his purpose in time without the Holy Ghost. Tell your neighbor, pastor is speaking to you. Hallelujah. Amen. And so tonight under the umbrella, the promise of the Father, we are believing God that the Holy Spirit will be our God. Hallelujah. We will recognize him as our resident God on earth. Not only that, the Holy Ghost will be seen as the one who out of the chaos correct or becomes our corrector and our creator. Listen, I didn't say creator. I said curator. C-U-R-A-T. Are we here? Somebody say corrector. Say curator. All right. It's going to be good in here. Hallelujah. Amen. So we see the Holy Ghost right from the beginning. Also being the one who transforms chaos into cosmos. When we say cosmos, 
it is the word world but it is the arrangement the orderly arrangement of the things in the world the sun is in its place the moon is its in its place the rivers are in their places the sea knows its boundary the hills and the valleys they have not come to your bedroom hello are you understanding what i'm saying hallelujah animals have their own habitat hallelujah and so god we, when we see the arrangement of the world we call it the cosmos we have another word in the greek called aeon and in that essence you are not talking about just the arrangement of things but the seasons within the world the, the epochs within the world hallelujah amen and so then we come in in here we realize that the Holy Ghost has the power of turning chaos into cosmos. How did he do that? He hovered over it. That is why our title is, And the Spirit of God Moved. Everybody say, And the Spirit of God Moved. So going back to Genesis chapter 1 verse number 2, we see that he hovered over the waters. There was chaos. There was confusion. There was disorder. There was disarray. There was diseases. Things were not good. Hallelujah. Right from that part of creation. We see that the Holy Ghost was at work. Moving. And the action of the Holy Ghost. Here we say that you know. Um, uh, what do you call it? Ruach Elohim Rakaf. Ruach Elohim Rakaf. In other words, the spirit of the Lord moved. In the word Rakaf, it's like a bed, a mother bed, like a mother hen that has been given eggs to sit on. And so when he sit on the eggs, there are days that the eggs must hatch. And with hens, it is 21 days. Other beds have different times. And so on and so forth. So within that 21 days, the behavior of the bed changes. It sits on them. In the same way, in Acts chapter number 2, the disciples were afraid. They had the seed in them, but they could not function. They had the acumen to preach, but they could not function. They had the power to heal, but they could not function. And so the Lord says, I know what you are carrying. Tell five people, I know what you are carrying is gonna be good in here south i'm carrying something he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world the bible fulfills and says that in genesis chapter 1 verse number 11 everything that god created has its seed its potential its ability to become within itself and so the holy ghost that's what sat upon the earth in the face of the deep and hoover like a mother bed whilst he was doing that he was hatching he was trying to prepare a hatching of the light it wasn't long in genesis 1 verse number 3 god showed up and said let there be light there was light let there be this there was that parenthetical we look at Acts chapter number 2 and the Holy Ghost sit on Peter who once upon a time was coward. But when the Holy Ghost came upon him, he stepped out and preached boldly. You are about to do what your mother has not been able to do. You are about to do what your father has never been able to do. Sit down and watch me. I prophesy to you and I believe it for you by force in the name of Jesus. You are alive because there is something inside you that is calling for expression. The whole creation waited for the manifestation of Joanna. Where are you? Observe. What's your name? what's your name put your name there shout I am here you look at it and you enjoy scripture when you read Genesis 1 and you read Acts chapter 2 you realize that just as the Holy Spirit sat upon them in the upper room the Holy Ghost sat upon the earth tonight anything that looks impossible may you bring it under the jurisdiction of the holy ghost may you ask the holy ghost to spread this wind over it may you come subjecting to the power of the holy ghost that not by might not by power but by your spirit i know that when your spirit spreads its wings on this one it's gonna work 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The question becomes is what are the chaoses in your life? What are the confusions in your life? May we come under the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We realize that things in the earth forms, life forms began in creation after the Holy Ghost had done his bid. Different things started showing up. Why? Because the Holy Spirit of God had done his bid. Shall we look at Psalm number 104 and verse number 29 and 30? Please. Thou hidest thy face, and they are troubled. Thou takest away thy breath, they die and return to the dust. 30. 30. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, and they are created. I pray that God will stir up recreation in you. In the name of Jesus. And thou renewest the face of the earth. Why? Because the Spirit of God has moved. Hallelujah. Anytime the Spirit of God moves, there is a quickening. Why? Because in John chapter 6, verse number 63, the Bible says it is the Spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. The Spirit quickened. The Spirit quickened. You might not have that kind of inspiration to do that job, but when the Spirit quickens you, you become like Elihu, and you say there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Lord God giveth him understanding. Hallelujah. And so in John chapter 6 and verse 63, it says that the flesh profited nothing. So in other words, when the spirit quickened, then you are going to be moved. I pray that anything that has made you stuck in finance, in health, in your family life, in marriage, in any endeavor of yours, I pray that the Holy Ghost will kick in your mortal body. I pray the quickening power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus, that which is dying, I pray that the power of the Holy Ghost we quicken you according to Romans chapter 8 and verse number 11. Hallelujah. Amen. And so then we get to that place where we realize that you know, our spirit, our own spirit, because we are trapped up being you are a spirit, you have a soul and you live in the body. That's who you are. Our own spirit fills us unless God's spirit fills us. Our own spirit will fail us unless God's spirit fills us. Our own spirit will fail us unless God's spirit fills us. Our own spirit will fail us unless God's spirit fills us. Our own spirit will fail us unless God's spirit fills us. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, your own spirit will fail you unless God's spirit fills you. Tell your neighbor, be filled by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, we can come to church, dance around, do whatsoever. But if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, He may be moving around you, but if He's not indwelling you, you have missed it. Hallelujah. Put your hand on your head, begin to pray right now. Say, Fill me more than ever before. Fill me now, fill me, fill me. When you buy a new car, you don't fill the fewer ones. But anytime the fuel goes down, you go for infilling. You go to the get to God's gas station right now and ask for some infilling. Come on now. Yes, I know. Yes, you have been born again for 30 years, but you need an infilling. The waters might be getting dry. You need a special irrigation from above. I pray it to put your hands on your head and pray. Don't lose it. Don't sit in the service and forget about yourself. That is why you are fasting. You are afflicting your soul. The devil we want you to lose some minutes by the time you realize special moments have passed you by. Pray right now. Rados Kabahaya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So our own spirit fills us unless God's spirit fills us. So wherever you find yourself, always be in the fellowship 
of the Holy Spirit. And so one of the accounts and one of the admonitions of Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter number 13 and verse 14 is that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave them this. He says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship or the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now. Be with you. Amen. Be with you. The communion, the koinonia of the Holy Spirit. You cultivating a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Making sure that nothing you do quenches the fire. Making sure that nothing you do grieves him. And if even you have sinned, you are smart to repent there and then. Tell your neighbor, pastor is speaking to you. Proverbs chapter number 8, 18 verse number 14. From the amplifier, it says, The strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pains. Life comes with a lot of bodily pains. <laughs> pains of poverty. <laughs> pains. Different kinds of pains. Hallelujah. If there are different kinds of pain. You go to the hospital, the doctor will tell you what kind of pain. Is it burning? Is it a pre so There are different kinds of pains. So the strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pains or trouble. Why? Because God has said that on this earth you will have tribulation. He knows there will be pain. And somebody said the other day, pain is a sign of life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It says, but a weak and broken spirit who can raise up or bear. So when your spirit man has been strengthened by the Holy Ghost, when your own spirit has been, uh, what do you call it, uh, have been, been empowered, enabled by the Holy Spirit, you receive divine sustenance. Hallelujah. Even at the face of all odds, people don't understand why you still wake up and go to work. They don't understand why with all the blows they have thrown at you, you are still striving to thrive. Hallelujah. And you are thriving. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Because there is something they cannot see that is sustaining you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so in coming forth in this essence, we should also understand that the Holy Spirit has a way of transforming us. Of transforming us. The Holy Ghost did it right from the onset. And theologically, you could put it this way. The Holy Spirit transforms the pre- Modial chaos into something beautiful, ordered cosmos. Hallelujah, amen. The Holy Ghost has a way of doing it, and anything you put in the hand of the Holy Ghost, it becomes better. Now, running by a need to me by a need to soon by me go oh yes lord hallelujah another man called edwin hatch i don't know why his surname is edwin hatch edwin that's another issue i will meet him and talk to him about it Hallelujah. But the surname is Hajj. And, 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 and Hajj, we are talking about the brooding powers of the Holy Ghost. And he sings a song and he says that, Beat on me bread of God. Fill me with life anew that I may love the way you love and do what you will do that I may love <laughs> what does us love La, that's so and big. do what the world does do 
Second one says, Breathe on me, bread of God. And throw my heart. <laughs> Were you here yesterday? <laughs> On the What does the test stand to say? Breathe we on me, breath of God. God. Till I am home. What a prayer. He wrote this song in 1878 or something. Until this early part of me. Close with I a divine. Until this early part. Close with a fire divine. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Nothing and absolutely nothing works within this molecular realm without the supervision of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are several names of the Holy Spirit. We know him as you know, the comforter. We know him as the counselor. We know him as the baptizer. We know him as the advocate. We know him as the strengthener. We know him as the sanctifier. We know him as the spirit of Christ, the spirit of the Lord. We know him as the spirit of truth. And so on. we can the spirit of mercy, the spirit of holiness, and so on. And his symbols as bread, wind, water, oil, light, dove, and so on. We can go on and on and on. But we should also know that he has a divine graces upon him to be able to correct and curate. Correct and curate. And we are believing God that God by his power will bring us there. Now when we say he's corrective, because we realize that right from the beginning of creation, everything was in a mess. But when the Holy Ghost brood, correction comes. Restoration comes. Renewal comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many need some corrections? Hallelujah. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 10, there is an error that has been set by rulers. If there are errors, then the errors must be corrected. Hallelujah. When we say a corrector, who is a corrector? A corrector is someone who identifies errors, restores order, and brings things back into alignment. A corrector is someone who identifies he has a way the earth was without form and void and i have used to mention some two hebrew words to you tohu and bohu <laughs> hallelujah amen amen and so you realize that i'm not i'm talking about a corrector yeah do the right thing so now so a corrector is someone who identifies errors and restores order and brings things back into alignment in context of the Holy Spirit, we see him actively involved in correcting the chaos, introducing creation due to sin and rebellion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We see the Holy Ghost depicted as an agent who hovers over the chaos, bringing about restoration and renewal. Aside the corrector, being a corrector, we know who a corrector is. But who is a curator? Curators are most of the time found around museums or institutions. And this is what they do. This is who they are. Curators, a curator is a person who oversees or manages a place such as museum, art collection, zoos, and so on and so forth. That offers exhibits. Curators are responsible for selecting. They select the best. Selecting, organizing, caring. Do you know that the Holy Ghost cares? He has the comforting ability. Caring for specific collections and subject areas. So that is, you know, we're looking at who a curator is. Even though we're looking at the Holy Ghost in that context, he is more than a curator. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. It's more than a corrector. Hallelujah. Are we here? Hallelujah. And so they have the curators and so they have the ability to check whatsoever is there. They are able to detect and discern fraud. Detect what is counterfeit. And so they will correct the, or co collect the authentic legend, artworks and so on and so forth. And then uh, far from that they exhibit in their exhibitional side. That is the witnessing side that the Holy Ghost brings to us. After the Holy Ghost has worked on you, then he brings you on the podium of life. And he says that now, let me showcase you to the world. Not in only Jerusalem, but in Judea and the uttermost part of the world. Somebody shout, I am the world. Shout, I am the world. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we realize that because of the sins of life, we realize that falling, we go through a lot of things. Ask your neighbor, what are you going through? Hallelujah. So we see the earth was without form. Your earth might be formless. There might be wordlessness around it. Vainful stuff, confusion, emptiness. I mean, things that are not vanity, waste, and wilderness stuff. There could be void. Hallelujah. Emptiness. An undistinguished room. Undistinguishable room and emptiness. And so there could be darkness upon the face of our air. But all that God is asking us to do is to bring it under the power of the promise of the Father. That as we bring it under the power of the promise of the Father, what will he do? He will come and manifest his brooding prowesses. The brooding prowesses of the Holy Spirit precedes all outstanding birthing forth in history. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And you can't throw away the conception of the Holy Ghost. The rubies, the royalties of the Holy Ghost can't be repudiated nor rubbished. We look at Matthew chapter number 1 verse number 18 to 20. The Bible says that now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. The birth of Jesus was on this wise in this way. When he is, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, infumistically, before they copulated, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was mindful to put her away privately. Uh, privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. That which is conceived in her. Everybody say conceive. Everybody say conceive. Now conceive is what God has made us to be. He has put seeds in us. And those seeds must go through incubational period. Those seeds are potentials of what you must be. Those seeds are the words that must become flesh. Tell your neighbor pastor is speaking to you. In the Greek we say genao. It means to procreate as of a father and mother. To generate, bear, begat, born. You are an inventor seated on an acre of miles and still suffering poverty. There are things inside us. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me get into the dictionary. Import of, of conceive or conception is to get pregnant, become impregnated. Be fed like two. Two. It means to think up. So, so, so when you conceive an idea, it is not only as in carrying seeds and bedding for because some of you are wake up. You have finished giving birth. Wave at me. You have finished giving birth. Some of you too, you still want to give birth. 
God bless you. Receive triplet. Oh, I didn't hear. So when we say conceive, it also means to think up, to come up with dream whatsoever, draw up, devise, design, and so on, and so on. It three. It also means to imagine, envisage, conjure, hallelujah, appreciate, and so on and so forth. And so all this that I'm saying to us is bringing us to that part where we then come to the realization that when the Holy Ghost overshadows you, whatsoever is within, that demons from the bloodline are saying you can't be it. As you come under the promise of the Father, they will come to fusion. I see inventors here. I see somebody who is going to come up with a product that has never been before. Where are you? I see that you will enter your kitchen and just looking at your ingredients, you will have a mixture that will change the culinary industry. I'm prophesying to somebody. Somebody is going to up my God. You will catch a concept. You will have an idea. Hallelujah. We are not just going to do what Africans know to do better. That when we said be fruitful and multiply. No. We will also create things. We will add value to things. And that the power and the supervision of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Ghost, the curator and the corrector come over your life. May he sit on your industry. May he sit. Oh, you said you are a mechanic. May he sit on your industry. There will be something that only you can fix. Your imagination will be Holy Ghost precise. Your intuition will be Holy Ghost precise. Your creativity will be Holy Ghost precise. Hallelujah. Your invention will be Holy Ghost precise. All that you need is that the Holy Ghost should come over you. Say Holy Spirit come over my life hallelujah say holy spirit come over my life hallelujah amen the angel answered mary in luke chapter number two is it 35 luke 135 from the 34th verse even mary said oh listen uh, the, we are in second Italy. you don't know second Italy. you you don't know how things work you don't know that you can have a business, have your degree and pedigree and things will be still, you will be struggling. You don't know where we are. The angel says, I know. But I'm saying to you, it's a new day for you. There's a prophecy for some. It's a new day for you. I said, it's a new day for you. There might be famine in the land, but God will raise an Isaac out of you. And you will have a hundredfold. An angel, Mary said unto the angel, how shall this be? Seeing I know no man. Hallelujah. Hey, he said, the angel, what is that? Then the verse number 35. The angel said, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Peter, once upon a time, was running away from a little damsel. He said, I don't know Jesus. But when the Holy Ghost came upon him, he was not even afraid to die. He was ready to go all out. Some of us, what you could not open, you will open. Where are you? Hey, doors that were shut at you, you will enter. Where are you? Enter, enter. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you will see figures you have never seen before. Hey, hey, I'm saying figures you have never seen before. I'm saying some figures you have never seen before in your life. You will be surprised. Hallelujah. A sister somewhere, you know, they say, said, Pastor, I was believing God for money. Just recently, I was, said, I was believing God for money. And then, oh, I didn't know how these things were. I have some other issues, the bank, and was, uh, all of a sudden, I had a call from the bank, and they said, so, so, and so, you have this amount of money seated. He said, is that, is, 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 what did you say? He said, we have already checked your mail right now. He says, ah, but I haven't done any. Are you sure? He says that he started sweating. She started sweating. Then she, she went by. He says, hold on. He says, he went to the bathroom. She didn't, hold on. She just left the phone and went to the bathroom. 
went to we and came back again. He said, what did you say? He said, that the Amma. He said, can you mention it? He said, when is my son? Hey! Then, then, then she said, ah, so can I redraw some? He says, for now, you, we, we, uh, you are entitled to quarter of the amount. He says, pastor, even the quarter. Hey! hey. Somebody is saying, pastor, you don't know there's no Ghana bag. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Tell five people all things are possible. I'm not telling you Anansi's story. Something will shift. Something will change. You will have a text message you have never had before. Or oh, under the season of the supernatural. All things are possible. Mary said, how can this be? I know no connection. I don't know any politician. I don't know anybody in the Flagstaff house. I don't know any MP. I don't know. I don't have any politics, political card. I don't know anyone. He said unto her, the Holy Ghost will come upon thee and the power from on high will epicazo will come over you will sit on you will overshadow you for in the flesh profited nothing but the spirit quicken it when the spirit comes in what man says you can do <laughs> you will run and outrun hey, you will overtake and recover all yes i declare to you some of you the family treasuries that your mother's mother missed that your father's father missed you are the one whom the holy ghost the corrector and the creator is about to restore to you oh my god my god some things were offered to idols but god by his power will turn it around by the efficacy of the blood of jesus where are you are sensed that some door is about to open for somebody all other places have been shut but the lord says in the season i am going to shift gears for you i'm going to break protocols for you and you will know that i am the lord who has ever given birth without meeting a man before And you can't defy the virgin birth of Christ. And if it did happen, say Holy Ghost overshadow me. I know you have your degrees and your doctorate. Say Holy Ghost overshadow me. I know you have connections, but man cannot help you. Can't be the man who puts his trust in man. Those trust, some people trust in chariots, others in horses, but we shall call on, say Holy Ghost overshadow me. begin to pray for a minute pray for a minute i see portals opening right now my god my god begin to pray right now may angels ascend and descend over your life wherever you are you might be watching from Bessian Street, germany wherever you might be watching from switzerland you might be watching from china wherever you might be watching from australia you might be what wherever you are watching right now yes in corners of ghana i declare to you there is no distance in the realm of the spirit there is an anointing that is going to come over you how jesus christ of nazareth was anointed with the holy ghost and with power and he went about doing good yes you have been stuck for a long time but on this third day of the fasting and prayer i declare may the power of the holy ghost come over your life may he sit over your life may he make the impossible possible some of you might have lost some things but some things are going to come back to you can sit down please and the angel answered and said unto her the holy ghost shall come upon thee oh come holy spirit we need you come sweet sweet spirit i pray come in thy strength and thy power oh, i thought somebody would lift up the hand come 
in thy own special way. Is somebody sick and tired of being sick and tired? Come, Holy Spirit. We, we need you. you. You are the curator and the corrector. Come, Come. sweet spirit. Sweet spirit. We pray. We pray. I pray. Come. Come, Come over this money. Come over this house. Come over this business. Come over this ministry. Come over this project. Come over the project. Come over the project. Come in a strength. And so the angel started giving testimony to Mary and said in verse 30 it says, and behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she had also conceived as a, 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 conceived a son in her old age. Now we read it as a story but it, uh, inferiorly the meaning is this, that there is it, it is never too late. I said it is never where are you? How old are you? I said it's never too late. You said that this thing, it is done in the 20s, but it is never too late. You said it, you should have done it in your 30s. It's never too late. You said I should have done it in my 40s. You, it's never too late. You are 60 counting. You said it's never too late. It's never too late. Elizabeth, in the old age, has conceived. You might not give birth literally. If you want to give birth, praise God, receive it. But you might have an idea. A conception, a dream, a vision, something that will come. It will not be a counterfeit one. Because the Holy Ghost, like the creator or curator, has a way of detecting fraud. And he will separate the fraudulent from the original. And I declare that grace over your life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse number 37, he said, for with God nothing shall be impossible and I wish you can say it five times to yourself for with God nothing shall be I know you are holding the hospital hospital report the lab report but with God nothing shall be if is it in your bag you can lift the bag and say with God nothing is it on your phone as PDF with God nothing shall be impossible they said it cannot be with God nothing shall be impossible I know people who they have cut their tubes but they have two girls with God nothing shall be impossible I know somebody whose kidney when started dialysis but they said the pastor when you came with, with, you, with, 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 with some of the church elders you were there in that place hallelujah in Accra listen and then he says that when you were praying he said God give him a kidney of a young person I, I said and what, what did I say he says, Pastor, it has happened. I'm off now. They call me to that hospital to, to, to speak to people. Hello. Hallelujah. At the right time, he himself will come here. And listen. With God, nothing. Hey, as pastors, as brothers, sometimes everyone gets to a doubtful default. Can it be? Can it be? You get to that place and you wonder, can it be? Hey, will it be? If you don't take it, that one will take you about two hours. And you be, what is wrong with you? What? Hey, it happens to all. Tell four people it happens to all. Sometimes you are not ready to pee pee, but you go and pee pee. Because the subject matter is heavy. Hallelujah. For with God. Oh, ha, ha, ha. I said with God. Oh, you didn't hear that. I said with, with. <laughs> I said with, with. Oh, yeah, me one more. Oh, yeah, me one more. I said, oh. I came to preach to somebody here. I came. Yeah. Oh, you can't stop crying. But keep 
Keep on calling on the name of the Lord. Hey, on your new one more. Hey, hey, Jehovah. If you want to pray in tongues, pray in tongues. If you want to call on him, call on him. When medicates and doctors cannot help, friends and loved ones cannot be found, pastors cannot be found, you are confused, you don't know where you are standing, you will look up to God. For with God, for with God, for with God, nothing. Radoska, Radoske, Patunka, Robukanta, Nikabo, Nibadu, Nileba, Sundapa, Labiko, Pinda, Labasele, Rabondeka, Italuba, Pulele, Maliba, Tosi, Kanda, Ladeska, Boye, Pray, Omele, Batoria, Rabopaya, you will not be put to shame. You are worried about a particular child of yours. I have seen in ministry, my ministry, I don't have time to talk about those testimonies. I've seen people whose children have been condemned as moron and Down syndrome, but God has made them top notch. They featured them in magazine for their excellence. Every year they send me their pictures because they know the God I say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are things. There are things. Children are born with features that people wonder what is it. By the prayer, by the time you realize God has evolved and ah, change my God. Something is about to shift in your life. The corrector, the curator is here. I said the corrector is the, the curator is here. Hallelujah. Amen. It says that all things are possible. The Holy Ghost will overshadow. And the overshadow means that he will envelop you in a haze of brilliance. He will, oh my God. Father, wrap me in your hand. Father, wrap me in your hand. Father, wrap me in your hands and father me. He invests with you to be invested with preternatural graces. It comes over you. Influence. I was speaking to one of the ministers in the UK and then who was also saying after his fasting and prayer and he said, he was telling me that I was asking, so what was he preaching? Sunday he said he was preaching on the Holy Ghost sitting on, on them and he dealt with influence for the Holy Ghost to overshadow you, you see the word it's influence, he influences you he influences you he influences you beyond what tradition can do beyond what culture can do beyond what your own weakness can do sometimes your own weaknesses and doubts can influence you and over influence you to the point that you think that there is no God the apostles were quarantined in the room, upper room but the Holy Ghost hatch the New Testament church. May the Lord hatch your life. Hallelujah. In fact, what's in chief 40? Hey, what bra boy in chief 40? Hey, in chief 40. Do you know in chief 40? When the egg, after 21 days, you are waiting. Uh, I, I, I give the hen seven eggs, but it's only four that have come. So you're wondering, is there any struggle with the other eggs? And you try to crack it and then the stench that will come out. It's NJ for tea. Rotten egg. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. There is a grace coming over you. We are about to hit into some prayer dimension right now. Nothing and absolutely nothing significant happens in life without the outpouring of the Spirit. And so Isaiah chapter 32 and verse number 15 says, Until the Spirit be poured, the wilderness will not be turned. Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, the wilderness and the wilderness be a fruitful field and the fruitful field be counted as a forest. Say, Holy Spirit, come over my life. Say, breathe on me. Say, breathe on me, God. Say, Lord, revitalize me. Say, Lord, animate me. Say, Lord, let your four wings from the north from the south, from the east and the west let them blow over my life, let every dry bone live if you're under the sound of my voice, rise up for a minute and begin to pray come on, clap your hands lift your voice pray right now, come on pray right now come on pray right now divine graces is coming over your life if the church was born by the brooding activity of the Holy Ghost, your USP will be born, your miracle will be born, your vision that company will be born. Fear not, a miracle is coming. Those who wait on the Lord, they renew their strength. We are waiting on the Lord in this fasting and prayer, friends and loved ones. Go and come up, go all out before the Lord. Hallelujah. As, as the curator, we are praying that the Holy Ghost will do these things for you in prayer. That he will guide, give you guidance and bring you selection. Hallelujah. When we say curators of a special institution or a museum, they select the best for exhibition. They choose the best. They bring guidance into the, to the institution and the leadership. Hallelujah. Amen. You can go down. You will see it here. Hallelujah. So, they, you know, you, you, they, they, they give guidance and they bring selection. We are praying that the Holy Spirit will bring guidance. He is our guide. He is our guide. He is our pedagogus. He is our guide. Hallelujah. Amen. He leads us in the way. Hallelujah. Hodigio. He brings us in the way. We might not know because he was there before creation. Hallelujah. And he gives us guidance. Hallelujah. He does them by his wisdom and his understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. We could go, time will not permit us to go into Isaiah 11, 2 and so on and so forth. But the Holy Spirit curates or curates our spiritual lives, leading us towards God's highest and best for us. Leading us. So now there are several options on the table. That's why sometimes I say that descend to decide. Several options on the table. 
You might not know. God says, I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. But you young man, you want to marry, you are looking at somebody's waist. How will you know? Do you think that breakthrough is in the waist? <laughs> you, 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 you need divine direction. You need the curator. Not just correction, but curator. He comes and he specifies. He makes the work easy for the institution and their leaders. And says that, no, you can exhibit this art. You cannot exhibit this one. This one, when you do it, you will lose patronage and clientele base. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody saying, thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Say, Holy Spirit. Speak. Say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Guide me. Select things for me. Help me in my choice. Help me in my decision making. Lead me towards God's highest and best for my life. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Come on now, wherever you are, clap your hands. You might not understand it. Pray right now. The Holy Ghost doesn't only make you speak in tongues. The Holy Ghost directs you in the name of Jesus. Come before him. Come before him. Hallelujah. One of the uh, second attributes and the characteristics of a curator is that they they have um, caring for for, for goods bequeathed to them, whether they are artifacts or whatsoever, they have some special inclination towards that. And whilst all others are working, they have a way of, you know, uh, ta uh, you know uh, what do you call it, um, putting codes on them, checking those that are defective and so on, those that must not be exhibited and so on, and they get the right collections for the right purpose. That is one of the nature of the Holy Ghost. Same, the Holy Ghost is caring. Say the Holy Ghost is caring. And when we say collection, we have people who go around collecting antiques. Old Vaswagon, 1972 model. Then they collect that one. A Bugatti. <laughs> 19, so they collect that those. They, they collect. The Holy Ghost has a way of gathering for you. He's not a scatterer. He's a collector and he brings the best. The Holy Ghost brings the best to me. Hallelujah. And in this, he does this by his indwelling grace. So 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 19. His indwelling presence. He says that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. He dwells within us. And he lives in us so that we can receive transmission from heaven. <laughs> Your own spirit left to traditions and culture will never receive divine meter band or will never receive transmission from heaven. But when the Holy Ghost indwells you, oh, oh my God. Hallelujah. His indwelling presence, his caring and uh, you know, his spiritual well-being ability, it comes over your life. And by the time you realize you are well placed, say Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. let your caring like and your collectional grace be my portion. Stir up your indwelling graces over me. Let me desire you. Let me walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Let me not grieve you. Let me not grieve you. Let me not extinguish you. Let me not quench you. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Now pray right now, brother. Pray, sister. Pray. Wherever you are, what's your name? Pray right now now wherever you are come on now let's pray come on now let's pray Yakabo, Tolobo, Zebrea, Repapo, Zebrea, Yakabo, Tolobo, Zebrea, Repapo, Zebrea, Repapo, Zebrea, Repapo, Zebrea, Repapo, Zebrea, Repapo, Zebr
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus. Name. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the blessings for the moving of the Holy Spirit and we connecting to the promise of the Father is that He brings us to that place where we are able to detect and discern counterfeit. You might want to get into a relationship, get into a business. Then your heart will begin to burn. Anytime you go to the meeting, you don't feel yourself. You don't sense yourself. The Holy Ghost will come in and convince you and convict you. Hallelujah. In John chapter number 16 and verse number 8 to 9 and 11, it says that he will convict us of sin. He will convict us. Hallelujah. Amen. Convicting us of sin. Sin is not necessarily going to steal the snail from your mother's soup. Or poor. Sin is missing the mark. Anytime you are about going outside God's bracket and guardrails, the Holy Ghost becomes the guardrail for you. Hello. Are we here? Hallelujah. Amen. Anytime you are about to step into this order, because anytime you step into this order, the devil comes on the rampage. So then the Holy Ghost guards you so that you will stay within the bracket of order. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit help me help. in detecting detect. and discerning and counterfeit people, counterfeit, counterfeit people. lifestyle. Counterfeit help, lifestyle. Me help me in my judgment, in righteousness. In what I must do, in my choices, deliver me from falsehood. Help me to have the right heart towards you. Help me expose falsehood. Then lead me towards repentance. Go down towards repentance in the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Give me renewal. Lift your voice and pray. Come on, lift your voice and pray. Come on now, lift your voice and pray. Oh, 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 are you praying? This is where the true warfare is. It is not, it's my God. This is where the true warfare is. Pray, brother, pray, sister. The Holy Ghost helps you to detect in detecting and discerning counterfeit and you receive the renewal. Pray right now. 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 Yabra Dora of Zebra. Zebra Dora of Zebra. Yabra Dora of Zebra. Yabra Dora of Zebra. Yabra Dora of Zebra. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The next thing that the Holy Ghost as a corrector and a curator does for us is this that he brings us to the place of exhibitions of God's glory. When you begin to manifest God's seat in you, it glorifies God. So Matthew 5, 16 says this, let your light so shine before men so that men will see and glorify your God. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Why? Because the darkness didn't want light to come. <laughs> Some of you, not that you are not blessed, but darkness has covered the face. Has veiled the face. And you need the power of the curating grace of the Holy Spirit. The correcting grace of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Ghost broods over you, all that God can say, let there be light. It is only the light that exposes good things. And when the light of God shows up, the glory of God shows up, you can't help but become witness. <laughs> You become a model of great testimony. Say, I am the one. Am the say, one. I will testify. I will testify. Say, I will testify. Will testify. Oh, say, I will testify. Better than say, I will testify. Say, I will testify. I will testify. I will testify. Hallelujah. Amen. All eyes will see the goodness of the Lord. Amen. In, in the land of the living. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So, when you receive the Holy Ghost, he says that you shall receive power. And you shall become witnesses. You will be you, you will be you will be a walking vessel of tangible testimonies. Everywhere you go, people will want to hold your garment and say, I want to worship your God. 
and we want to worship your God. We have not become this. Who, who is here that when you were coming, somebody ran to you and held your desk, said, no, I want to worship your God. Hello? When people saw you, they were running away because your testimony had not come. May the Lord put you on the grand rostrum of life. Hallelujah. Shout, I am the word. The one. Shout, I am the one. I am the one. Hallelujah. Amen. God has promised the promise of the Father. The believers will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon them. They will become witnesses. How? The Holy Spirit curates, curates our testimony, empowering us to display God's glory to the world. Hallelujah. Say, Lord Jesus, I lift up my hand, readily available. For your exhibition, your selection of grace has found me, O oh great curator. You have found me and you are presenting me in the right time to the world in the name of Jesus, in my ministry, in my health, in my world's life, in my business, in the marketplace, in my, in my, in my marriage. In all arenas of life, showcase me to your glory. Oh, showcase me to your glory. Come on, lift your voice and pray. Come on, lift your voice and pray. Oh, come on, pray right now. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, the Holy Ghost as a curator brings restoration, peace, and order. For our God is not an author of confusion. Our God is not an author of confusion. First Corinthians chapter number 14, 33. And the 40 verses that do everything in order. I pray that our God will show up in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the power of God that came upon the judges of old, may those graces come over you. Amen. May you see restoration. Jesus. May you judge aright. May you experience deliverance. Jesus. May you experience Amen. peace Amen. like Otnia, like Gideon, Amen. and so on and so Amen. forth. Lift your voice and begin to pray. That grace that makes you overcome challenges, let it come over you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Having said this, we realize that the Holy Ghost as a corrector and curator is going to manifest giving guidance. He will be guiding, selecting for us, caring, detecting and discerning, empowering and restoring. Say, I receive this. I receive Say, it. I receive this. I receive Say, it. I will never lack guidance. Never lack guidance. Now, you, we sing a hymn here. By thy unerring spirit. Come on, sing it. We shall not in the desert. Come on, talk to me. Oh, we shall. I shall. No. Hallelujah. 
Say, Lord Jesus, by thy unerring spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, my counselor, my corrector, my curator, I declare, I am all yours. It dwell me. Give me guidance. Select us for me. Help me in discerning. Help me in deciding. Help me to decide. Decide. And know the difference, know the difference. From, the from the counterfeit and the original. And the original. Let, your Let your goodness be my portion. Be my portion. I, come to you I come to you that you will help me will help align with the Holy Spirit. The Holy that what is written, that what is written about me in heaven will be done in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Come on. Come on. Come on now. 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 Come on let your spirit lift up your hands wherever you are close your eyes wherever you find yourself let every hand be lifted and desire the infilling of the Holy Spirit you may have been dry going dry you are driving but there is no oil in your engine there is no fuel in the tank you are about to crash land. You are about to get stuck. You realize you are fainting. It is the strong spirit of a man that sustains him. Who can bear a broken spirit? We have come to God's gas station. You are saying that refuel. <laughs> refuel my life. Refuel my life. Oh, you might be a student, you might be a mother. Refill my life, lift your hands. Taking a deep breath. And as you breathe in and out, tell the Holy Ghost, refill my life. I will ready my few do do. Lift up your hands. Well. You true. What do Lift up your hands. Come before him. Tell him to feel you. Feel me. Feel me. Feel me. Come on, take in a deep breath right now. Take in a deep breath. Exhale anything that is fleshy. As you breathe out. Or somebody you are desirous of a fresh anointing. How Jesus Christ of Nazareth was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. Yes, in your bedroom. Yes, in your kitchen, your hallway, where you are watching, wherever you have parked your car somewhere and you are watching, wherever you find yourself, may the power of the Holy Ghost come to you. Receive the infilling of the Lord. May his breath come over you. The animating graces of the Lord, may it come over your life. You, you know that throughout the day you have not been well. He's saying that if the Lord doesn't do something, I will lose it. You know, it's as if you are walking on a thin line. On a thin line. But receive a revitalization. The refreshing, the renewal of the Holy Spirit. The empowering, restoring grace of the Holy Spirit. May it come over your life right now. He sent for the spirit. And they are renewed. In the name. You will, not, you will not fail. Who said so? You will not fail. You will not be put to shame. Oh, it's okay to cry. Tears flowing. But listen. You will not fail. You will not fail. You will not fail. You will not fail. You realize that it's difficult. 
you want to lift yourself up and do that which is needful but you can't it's like some things are weighing you down but by the power of the Holy Ghost may his fire burn off any weight any depressive stain anything that is sitting on you may the power of the Holy Ghost rather sit on you refine us fire come over our lives revive us restore us change us challenge us bring us there against all odds Lord God our eyes are on you may your name be glorified may your name be magnified I see a lot of workers they are in overalls and then it's as if they were commissioned but they were not going but all of a sudden everybody has taken their two box and they are marching towards the place of work and the Lord is ministering to me to tell everyone of the service, he said that you will fulfill the assignment grace the spirit of grace has been bequeathed unto you what you thought you would not be able to do he has equipped you he has empowered you go and fulfill that assignment wherever you are take a step from where you are just take a step oh my god may we march on to the place of perfection for out of zion the perfection of beauty the holy ghost transforms chaos into beauty he transforms brokenness into beauty and he's doing the same with your life the broken pieces of your life he's mending he's mending he's mending be empowered now and forevermore in the name of Jesus finally life is short death is sure sin is the cause Christ is the cure if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior Say this prayer with me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me with your blood. Let your Holy Spirit come and reside within me. Breathe on me, oh breath of God. Renew my life anew. I accept you as my Lord, my personal Savior. In Jesus' name. If you have received it, put your hands together. I will challenge you to listen to the message again and again. Even if you are sleeping, let it play over you. Find a way. Hallelujah. And as we come before the Lord, I know your life will never ever be the same. Amen. Hallelujah. We know him as our counselor. How about your corrector and your curator? May this grace be upon you. May you be revitalized. Take your offering wherever you live streaming. We lift our offering before the Lord. Whether doing it by electronic means or whatsoever. We pray that may the hand of the Lord and the God will reward secret acts of his people publicly. May he reward you. May your gift to his kingdom and your blessing to his kingdom, your seed be watered. May they receive the spiritual bliss and blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Let's bring our offering. You can do a rendition if you